This is one of the wildest chemical reactions I've ever seen. With just a tiny amount of starting material, an enormous mass of black foam suddenly erupts. The reaction is between sulfuric acid and paranitroaniline. And after a few minutes of heating, the mixture violently polymerizes into this crazy foam. What makes it even cooler is that this very reaction has actually been studied by NASA as a way to create fire-resistant materials. Pretty amazing, right? What I have here is a bunch of dry ice, and I'm just going to drop it into a beaker and wait a bit. Now, if I light a match and lower it in, it almost instantly goes out. This is because as the dry ice sublimates, it fills the beaker with carbon dioxide, which doesn't support combustion. Now let's try basically the same thing, except with magnesium metal. To do this, I first have to light it, and it's so bright that it almost hurts my eyes. But when I lower it in, unlike the match, it doesn't immediately go out. In fact, it actually seems to burn even better, and it doesn't seem to care that there isn't any oxygen. This is because magnesium is so reactive that it can directly react with the carbon dioxide and rip the oxygen out of it. It's even able to do this with things like water and sand, which is honestly kind of terrifying. How do we figure out how many calories are in the food we eat? We burn them, but not in the way you might expect. They just melt. To measure energy content, scientists use something called a bomb calorimeter. Despite the dramatic name, it's basically a metal cylinder sitting in a tank of water. A sample of food is placed inside, oxygen is pumped in, and the food is burned. The heat released warms the water, and every degree each gram of water increases in temperature equals one calorie. Now, I don't have a calorimeter like this to show you, but I do have some molten potassium chloride. And I think it does a pretty good job of showing just how much energy can be stored in food.